We've got Michael Callender with us uh, from the Clifton House in uh, Berkshire, Taplow, England. And I've spent a couple of days here at the property. It's a, a beautiful estate with a magnificent uh, house. House, I say house, right, Michael? Correct, it's, that's right. It's a large, large property uh, and was owned, once owned by the Astors. And give us a little bit of history about the... the uh, the Clifton. Well, the house has been here for about, um, well, say, since 1666. It was originally built for the, the first, the second Duke of Buckingham, uh, George Villiers. The reason he built it here was one day. It was one day's horse and carriage journey from central London. Um, if you were very rich in those days, you bought a house or had a house built. Um, you didn't stay in one of the numerous inns that are in the area. You could do have your own property. He was a bit of a rogue, really. Uh, but he's a, financially, he was very naughty, and morally, he was totally corrupt. Um, and he's very famous for having one of the uh, the last fighting, one of the duels, last duels in the country, oh where one of the combatants died. Mm. Um, he was having a, a torrid affair with the Countess of Shrewsbury, and the Earl of Shrewsbury, her husband, got very upset, challenged him to a duel, um, and alas, he he lost. Um, and, a, and a true picture of how the Duke of Buckingham was. Um, he took his prize, the, the Countess, away on, the, on his horse um, and installed her in a castle in the north. And in one wing he had his wife, and in the other wing he had his mistress, and then he lived in the middle, which I thought was a very good uh, sort of a indicator of how his true character was. Very interesting. Now, is this the same Buckingham that did Buckingham Palace? That's right. It wasn't actually the same one. It was the same family. Same family. Um, um, uh, so an earlier member of the Buckingham family, uh, the Dukes of Buckingham, had, uh, had given that land to the king, and, and hence the, the palace had been built on that, that spot. Wow, wow. So what happened after that? That was 1600 somewhere? That was 1600. The, the, the Buckingham family had the house through until the early 1700s. Mm-hmm. And then for the duration of the 1700s, the, the house was um, owned by the Earls of Orkney. Um, and they had it through until the early parts of the 1800s. So they had it for about 100 years. Mm-hmm. Um, in the middle of the 1700s, the Orkney family rented the house out to Frederick, Prince of Wales, who was um, the son of the king. He was, in fact, the son of George II. Mm-hmm. And he was the father of George III. Um, he never became king himself um, due to an unfortunate accident that happened at Clifton. Um, he was playing cricket in the back garden. And I don't know if you or your, your listeners know about cricket, but the ball is very red and very hard. It's made out of um, compressed leather. And it really is rock hard. Mm-hmm. Almost as hard as wood, I think. Um, and this was, um, was bowled at him, and he hit, it hit him in the chest, broke some ribs, and then he got pneumonia. Oh and he died at um, the, the Kew Gardens, the palace at Kew Gardens. Okay. So as a result of that, so he was never king himself. So were they playing down by the Thames? On the wonderful parterre that you can see out of the window there. Exactly. Um, and this, with this, it's got these fantastic sort of, uh, sort of clipped hedges down uh, on them. That, the whole lawn there right. was created with manpower. It was uh, originally it was a forested hill, mm-hmm. um, and then they created that large flat lawn um, purely for the sort of decorative reasons. Right. And then that was all made just through the manpower of. of about 1,500 men over a large number of years. Wow, wow. So the, that property that we're talking about just then is the property of the uh, bordering the Thames or the Thames coast through that? That's right. The, 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 the Clifton Estate um, is bordered on one side by the River Thames. It's got about two and a half miles of Thames River frontage. Uh, we've got some, I'm sure you've seen the models in the, the Great Hall of the, the wonderful boats that we have on the Thames. Um, these date from quite a little later, a bit later than the, the 1800s, but, um, and it's, uh, we've got a number of boats seating up to 12 people that we can take people up and down the Thames and to various destinations. And um, we do picnics and all sorts of wonderful things on there with our, with our boatman, uh, Ken the boatman. You also have stables here. Now, when did the stables start? Uh, well, we have, we have stables here, but uh, alas, they're now a restaurant. Well, the last of the horses, maybe. Okay. But um, Lord Astor, um, who owned the house from the, sort of the sort of 1893, um, and his son were great horse breeders, mm-hmm. um, and they had a nearby stables next to the estate. Um, and those stables um, are sort of, uh, still provide horses for us to to uh, to, to sort of like rent out for guests, um, you know, throughout the year. Very good.
Now, the asters are the asters that we know of. Uh, that's right. The yes, Titanic the, asters. That's right. The, the house was, um, was was sold to the asters by um, the richest family in the United Kingdom at the time. It was the Duke and Duchess of Sutherland, who were great friends of Queen Victoria. Mm -hmm. And in fact, because of them, Queen Victoria used to sail down the River Thames and take tea with the Duchess at the lovely Spring Cottage that uh, you, you may and well have seen in the grounds. So that's right. Mm -hmm. Um, and the Duke and Duchess of Sutherland sold the house to these, these, American, these awful Americans, as Queen, as Queen Victoria <laughs> called them. Um, and the, these, uh, these Americans were the Astors, uh, which you so rightly said were um, uh, hugely wealthy as a result of um, property in New York. Um, and from fur and from forestry products. Um, as, in, as the railroads went across America, the Astor family chopped down their forests that they had in, in sort of Canada and everywhere, which provided them a lot of fur. Um, and they used the trees from those forests to use as sleepers under the railroads. So they made a, a small amount of money on a huge number of things. Um, this wealth meant that they could um, buy properties like Clifton and many other properties in the UK when they came across here. And in fact, Lord Astor um, gave his son um, Clifton as a wedding present um, right. in 1906 when he got married to Nancy Langhorne and of course Lady Nancy Astor, who right. as she became then. Um, as a, a little side gift, they were also given the Waldorf Astoria Hotel which um, was clearing around, in 1906, was clearing around about a quarter of a million dollars a year profit, which um, sort of helped them, helped the young newlyweds through their, their early days. I guess so. <laughs> now, the Lord Astor, uh, actually, we're sitting right now in the grand ballroom, or the uh, dining room. Correct? That's right, we call it the French dining room, and looking around now, as sort of the, the winter sun comes through and it's just shining on all the crystal and silverware in here, you can really see why it was such a beautiful room. Um, it's, it's a mirrored room, um, and when you look around, you, the first things that come to mind are sort of like Versailles and the French royal family, and that's no surprise really, because the, the, the house was bought from um, the, the, the Paris sales, mm -hmm. and was originally um, the, the dining room of the um, kings of France, uh, Louis XV, or in fact his mistress, Madame de Pompidour, mm -hmm. and she used this, this was her hunting lodge, and when you look around, there's quite a lot of imagery around in the house, uh, sort of guns, and sort of, and like lots of, sort of like hunting imagery, and flying birds, and sort of like, you know, all sorts of slathering hounds, and sort of rabbits, and some sort of rather ill-looking game. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. But then when you half close your eyes again, you see that lovely bust of, of, of Madame de Pompadour, looking out over the, over the table laid up, and you think, ah, oh, what a wonderful history this room has.